stocks across the eurozone and the US sliding amid mounting worries about the Portuguese financial system. Now, investors are dumping the shares and the bonds of Portuguese lender Banco Espirito Santo on the news that its parent company has missed a debt payment. Meanwhile, the luxury group Burberry went some way towards placating investors angered by new boss Christopher Bailey's pay package today as it shrugged off a strong pound to deliver double-digit sales growth. Burberry will face investors tomorrow at its annual general meeting. As many as 30% of shareholders are set to oppose the boss's pay and perks package worth up to £27 million. The Bank of England, as expected, has kept interest rates on hold at their record low of 0.5% today. Perhaps a sigh of relief from those with mortgages. A glut of mortgage deals aimed at buyers with small deposits has pushed the number of homeowners vulnerable to a slump in property prices to a post-crisis high in June. Many of those people will have had to leverage higher because of the rising property market. Well, also, we've had some figures in terms of house prices. House prices in London are expected to fall in the next three months, according to the Royal Institution of Chartered Surveyors. Let's talk now to Naeem Aslam, Chief Market Analyst at Ava Trade. Naeem, good to talk to you. Let's start off talking about that RIC survey about house prices and the Bank of England's latest non-move, if you like. There have been hints, haven't there, at possible rate rises sooner than many people have thought. Yes, thanks for having us. That is correct. Uh, today's event was the only thing different was that there was no statement by the officials. But they weren't going to increase the rates today, and it was pretty much marked in the market today. I think that the next time they are going to increase the interest rates, and that is the only probability, would be towards the November kind of a time frame. The reasons are simple. You know, we have a political situation going on in UK, uh, Scottish, they may look for independence, and then e, uh, England could be leaving altogether UK from um, EU. And then the wage inflation hasn't been there where they are looking to. Now, in terms of a housing market, it's a completely different story. The house, housing pricing in UK, especially in London, over 30% since 2007. So if you compare the price to 2007, the prices are 30% above. Now, we do have a stricter lending criteria, but is that really going to pull the market down or the mortgage approvals down? Yes, we have seen some sort of a proof of that, but we don't think that is going to happen. The market would keep carry on up for that trend. Now, let's talk about Burberry. I'm sure you and your colleagues in the city are talking about it. A huge pay package deal for the boss. A lot of angry shareholders to be expected tomorrow. Have today's results, do you think, placated any of those people? Yeah, I think that's going to be a very interesting event. Uh, but it, this is not something out of extraordinary. Because if you look at Roth, Roth Lauren, the CEO is getting nearly $24.4 million. Prada, $14 million. SVH, they're getting about 16 or 18 million. So it's not going to be that much difference when it comes to the shareholders. They're not going to get that much of a firepower to fight for this. But in terms of earnings, you know, he is performing exceptionally well because on year on year, uh, the sales are up by 10% and the store sales are up by 12%. And most of their sales are up because of digital media. They have a strong presence on Amazon, on eBay, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and all that kind of thing is going to play very well for the stock. So I think Burberry is a very good play, and then shareholders are going to have a very minimum power when they're going to try to uh, talk down the pay for uh, the CEO. Let's talk about Europe, European stocks. It's been a real ride, hasn't it, this week for European stocks. Worries about Portugal. What's going on in the markets this week, Naim? Uh, Mariam, the thing is, uh, the second biggest bank in Portugal, the missed interest payment, and now this is like all going back and then talking about the European debts and the peripheral debts and all that thing is back on the trader's mind. And that has actually triggered the biggest sell-off once again in the market today. Now, here's an interesting aspect from a trader's point of view. When you look at the market and then you look at the short interest for the market, that was on the 2% interest for S&P, they're the people who want to short that market, and for FTSE it was only 1%. Now, Marion, the thing is that this is a contrary indicator, because 
when was this level on the market before it was before 2007 so you know correction was going to come and then portugal situation has triggered that now there are key levels that we are watching in terms of a FTSE, in terms of s p that the broader index and the stock 600 if those key levels are broken i think the sell-off can get low more worse but one thing is for sure we do need probably a full-blown qe qe from Mary Draghi. Okay, gloomy predictions there, Naeem. Thank you very much indeed. Now, just a recap of the markets. Traders across Europe taking money off the table pretty much after fears about the stability of the Portuguese financial system. The FTSE closing down 46 points. Don't forget, you can get a full roundup of all the other top business stories on our website. It's bbc.co.uk forward slash business. That's a roundup of all the latest markets from me, Matthew Rachel. Back to you.